viewers. That means you can watch the same program in Boston, Dallas, Seattle, wherever you happen to be. It's American television and you. Can you feel it? Can you feel it? Can you feel it? They have what every woman wants and what every man dreams of. Stop teasing me. The women who make it happen on One Life to Live. Yes, sir. Weekdays. Hi, this is Steve Adelman, and I'm live here at KSTP. Ordinarily, Good Company would be on right now. We are going to be airing at 4 o'clock today because there is a special happening. Lou Holtz, it seems, is about to resign. And right now, Bob Bruce is going to be throwing us to a news conference live. Bob? Okay, thank you, Steve. Uh, as KSTP Sports reported earlier today, this is not a good afternoon for the football program at the University of Minnesota. If you haven't heard yet, Lou Holtz will be announced momentarily as the new head football coach at the University of Notre Dame, leaving the University of Minnesota. The official announcement, as I said, about to be made at a live news conference in South Bend, Indiana. And we have Channel 5's Rob Lear there, live now via Newstar. And uh, Rob, has it indeed begun yet? No, Bob, and Lou Holtz is here in South Bend. That has been confirmed. He arrived about an hour ago. As you can see, we are coming to you from the monogram room, which is here in the athletic complex on the campus of South Bend, you know, uh, here in South Bend, Indiana. Members of the media are here. So are some prestigious members of the Notre Dame alum. They are here for the formal introduction as Lou Holtz will accept the position as the 25th man to ever coach on the sidelines here at Notre Dame University. The scheduled uh, news conference was to set about 3 o'clock. We understand that the... Uh, people that are involved in this press conference, Lou Holtz and the athletic director from Notre Dame, are standing outside in the uh, hall area. There are several networks that are picking up this news conference live. There are others, some radio networks and whatnot. They want to make sure that everybody is synchronized because the football college world, anyway, will be on Lou Holtz, a man who has spent the last couple years at Minnesota, and a man who the Notre Dame officials just seem to be ecstatic about that he has accepted the job here. Let's back up just a minute about the uh, wheels that were set into motion. It was less than 36 hours ago that in this same room. Jerry Faust resigned as the football coach at Notre Dame. At that time, that last night's news conference was uh, a number of questions addressed to the athletic department at Notre Dame. At that time, they denied that there any contact at all had been made. They had refused to mention any kind of names whatsoever. All that they would tell us is that by 7 o'clock this morning, they had made the travel arrangements that would make it all possible for Lou Holtz to be flown here to South Bend. And again, he arrived within the last hour. Now, Holtz is scheduled to go to Palm Springs, California for his Thanksgiving holiday. Those plans will not be changed. He will be picking up uh, from here when this news conference is complete. He will be winging it off to California, and he will spend the Thanksgiving holiday there. A couple of notes of concern about the University of Minnesota football program. We understand, uh, Bob, that Lou has asked for the request to continue to coach the Gophers in their final game at uh, the Independence Bowl on the 21st in Shreveport, Louisiana. We have yet to hear back from Paul Gill whether or not they have uh, granted that permission. But we do understand that Lou exactly uh, would like to hang on with the program as long as possible in whatever vein that might take place. Uh, Rob, uh as that happens to be the same room that Jerry Fouch resigned in uh, just just the other day, uh, the feeling there in South Bend. You mentioned Paul Gill about coaching the Independence Bowl. That the next step for them, obviously, is who's going to coach that game. We'll find out because the university will have a news conference immediately following this one, which we will carry live. We'll find out from Paul Gill on that. But the feeling there among the people in South Bend. Uh, you and I both last night on the 10 o'clock news uh, thought that it wouldn't be any surprise if he was named as the head coach. But what was the feeling there? The feeling was one of excitement, and uh, ironic perhaps that it was the same type of enthusiasm, excitement that was felt in Minneapolis. We remember a couple of winters ago when it was so close to Christmas time that Minnesota would get the news that Lou Holtz would enjoy uh, his tenure on at the University of Minnesota. It's with that same kind of excitement that the news spread here in South Bend. A couple of television stations reported the story no, last night here in access. South Bend, as well as, of course, ours in Minneapolis. But the word here just seemed to be that Lou Holtz has always been the man for this job. It's the job that Lou Holtz has always wanted, and it seems to be the job that uh, Notre Dame has seen fit for Lou Holtz. I can't believe, and maybe you've got some more information on that end, that these two men, uh, I talk now about Father Joyce and Lou Holtz, would have completed this deal in the less than 36-hour time frame. I believe that these two men have been in contact for a long, long time, and perhaps for a couple of years, uh, things would work out the way they have because Lou Holtz is here, and 36 hours after Jerry Faust has resigned, all the details seem to have been worked out. 
Well, Lou did say that the first time serious contact was made was yesterday afternoon at 4 o'clock, but serious contact and casual contact can, of course, uh, be do two different things. Uh, any feeling there that uh, Notre Dame is, in, in effect, stealing away the University of Minnesota coach? Because I uh, hear the people that I've talked to on the phones, the, the fans, are, are very upset about this. They feel almost a bit betrayed. Well, the short time that I have spent on this campus, this, and I should add, this is my first visit ever, I, I get the impression that there's Notre Dame football and everybody else comes second. So the fact that Lou Holtz has been uh, about to be named as their football coach, well, they feel that that's their prerogative. If it means maybe robbing another coach from another program, I don't think there's many people in this room that represent people from the alumni of Notre Dame that that's much of a concern at all. Okay, a little bit of a break up there. Uh, uh, did you say that Corrigan will be handling the, any details as far as a contract for Lou? Uh, I, I think that probably it's more than money as far as his decision is concerned because, as he stated, uh, over the weekend uh, he went to a grade school that had uh, uh, nuns uh, from Notre Dame and that they used to sing the fight song when they'd go to uh, class each and every day. So I have a feeling that played a big role in his, in his decision. It, it did at that, Bob. In fact, they've handed out this prepared uh, statement of, of what exactly is going to happen here in, in the news conference, and we do now see that they are stepping to the podium, and they spell out in that news conference and, uh, and press release just how impressed they are. But now Lou Holtz, we all know him. He's the man in the middle. To mm -hmm. the left, Gene Corrigan, the athletic director of Notre Dame University, and those gentlemen mm -hmm. will proceed over this news conference. We will now turn it over to the head table. Are we ready? I gotta wait till they hook up here. If they're gonna ask nasty questions. Thank you now. I'm the conference line, sir. You may begin. Okay. Good afternoon. This is John Heisler from the University of Notre Dame. Uh, we have with us this afternoon Gene Corrigan, the athletic director of the University of Notre Dame, and Lou Holtz, the new head football coach at Notre Dame. Uh, please bear with us. We'll be attempting eventually to take questions both from people on the phone lines uh, and from people who are here at the press conference in person. Uh, and we'll attempt to answer as many different questions as we can. Uh, at this time, we'd like to turn it over to Gene Corrigan. Uh, thank you, John. We took a long walk down here to avoid all the crowds out front. I'm, I'm winded. Um, I want to first go over the uh, time spans. Uh, it seems like only a few hours ago that we were all in the same room. And we were talking about who was going to be the football coach and denials were going everywhere. So I think it'd be best that I let you know exactly what, what our time situation was. Uh, yesterday at about quarter of 11, before the 11 o'clock weekly press conference, Jerry came in and told me uh, that he had made the decision to, uh, to step down as football coach at Notre Dame. Uh, at that point, he went into the, uh, to the room to meet with the press and to... Uh, uh, deal with the questions and at that point I went over to see Father Joyce and spent uh, quite a time over there uh, talking with him uh, about what we would do and uh, how we would go about it. Uh, at four o'clock that afternoon we talked to Paul Geel, the athletic director at, at uh, the University of Minnesota uh, and got permission to uh, talk with Lou then talked with Lou for about an hour about some of the things that we talked about last night and what this job entailed. Uh, everybody knows of the glamour of the job, but uh, it was important to us for anybody who yeah. would consider taking this job that they... Uh, you gotta, you gotta push your thing up, sorry. Uh-oh. Sorry about that. Lock. There you go. Well. Oh, there we are. Thanks, John. These mechanized things always throw me. Where was I? Uh, we talked for about an hour, and as, as I mentioned, about uh, the important things. Uh, any coach that would be here would have to understand the the uh, importance of the of the academic integrity uh, of Notre Dame for an athlete. Of the uh, Unique pressures that an athlete would be under here, particularly one playing a major sport. Uh, to understand that the school has certain things that can be considered as drawbacks, like the fact that we are not going to change the red shirt policy, uh, we're not going to change the, the policy of, of not taking transfers, uh, that there is no year-round training table, that there is no uh, athletic dormitory. Those things are, are things that, that a person needs to know 
And Lou's been here to visit because he has a son here in school. Uh, so it's not like he hasn't been on the campus and, and hasn't seen it. He's never been on the campus with me uh, at any time. But I'll get into that in a, in a few minutes. About uh, immediately after, after uh, we talked with Lou, he met with his president, which was about 6 o'clock our time, uh, probably 5 o'clock his time. Uh, after that, uh, after, and after our meeting here last night, uh, I called Lou and uh, we began to talk very seriously about the job uh, as we had before at 4 o'clock. We told him that he was our number one choice. Okay. That he was our number one choice and that uh, talked with him, I guess, from about 10.30. Uh, until I guess our last call was probably about midnight, uh, at which time uh, Lou said, I'll tell you what I want to do. I'd like to sleep on it. And if I feel the same way I do tomorrow morning, then uh, you got yourself a coach. If I feel the same way tomorrow morning that I do right now, you've got yourself a coach. So uh, that was what happened. We called this morning. And uh, in the meantime, uh, his president, Dr. Keller, and Father Joyce talked about a release time. It was agreed that they wanted to uh, do some things before it was generally known in, in Minnesota what was going to happen. So we agreed on a 2 o'clock release time there, which was why we didn't put out a release before that, although I don't think it was much of a shock when Lou walked in here. I didn't hear any gasps from you all. Um, so and here we are. Uh, again, uh, last night and this morning, we did discuss how, ways of getting him here. Uh, as I told you last night, it's been customary for Notre Dame uh, when the football job has ever been open for whatever reason uh, to move swiftly uh, and to bring in uh, somebody right away so that they can get started. We're, I couldn't be more happy uh, that it's Lou Holtz. Uh, I've known Lou uh, since he was at William and Mary. And he was a wild young coach. Had blonde hair, as I recall. Um, did a heck of a job at William and Mary. If you look in his record there, you'll notice that one year he was five and seven and he went to a bowl. Well, the fact of the matter was that he won the Southern Conference Championship that year. And the Southern Conference champion used to play the Mid-American Conference in the Tangerine Bowl. Now, the games that he lost that year were to VPI, North Carolina, Virginia, and a bunch of Division I-A schools, that, the kind of schedule that uh, William and Mary used to play at that time. He went from there to North Carolina State. Of course, all those years that he was there, I was at the University of Virginia. So we had a great appreciation of his skills there because the four years that he was there are the four greatest years of football in the history of North Carolina State University. Uh, from there, he went to Arkansas, uh, started out uh, with a great, great team, and uh, one of his first teams helped Notre Dame win a national championship, I think we all recall, in 1977 with a resounding victory over Oklahoma in the uh, Orange Bowl. Uh, there were a lot of things uh, about Lou that caught people's attention even at that time. I think one that, that all of us remember was the fact that uh, he had some players who had broken some rules and he dropped three of them out for the game. They were all starters. And then they, in fact, went ahead and won the game, showing the value of, of discipline and commitment. Lou, uh, between NC State and, and Arkansas, spent a year in the pros and uh, learned that he wanted to get back into college. When he left Arkansas, uh, I thought probably he was going to get out of coaching. And at that point, uh, he surprised me and I think a lot of other people by uh, being at the University of Minnesota. And uh, it's hard for, I guess it's hard for any of us to, to know the feeling that, that uh, they seem to have for him in the rejuvenation that he's done for that program there. Uh, there's a lot of excitement surrounding it. and. Uh, I think we felt it in, in reading the, reading the uh, papers and, and uh, just from being involved in the Big Ten area. So from our standpoint, from the standpoint of Father Joyce and myself, uh, here was a guy who uh, had worked it out so that he was free to come. Uh, and here was a guy that even if he hadn't, uh, he's a guy that we'd like to have as our coach at Notre Dame. So with that, I introduce to you Lou Holtz, the new football coach at the University of Notre Dame. Thank you. Thank you, Gina. First of all, uh, thank you.
Thank you. I'm uh, delighted to be here. I'm proud to be named the 25th head football coach at the University of Notre Dame. It's with mixed feelings to a certain extent. Probably the happiest day of my life professionally to have the opportunity to coach at a school that I followed and marched out to the Notre Dame Victory March from St. Aloysius Grade School from grades three through eight for not only lunch and dismissal, but recess as well. And when we went into coaching, you always had a desire and an ambition to coach at the University of Notre Dame in the back of your mind, but never really believing that you might have that opportunity. I have some mixed emotions because the people in the state of Minnesota are fantastic. All the good things I said about the state of Minnesota over the last two years, I believe as strongly today as I did when I said it. There's a lot of pride there. There's wonderful people there. There's committed people. There's genuine people who care, and there's a great ethic and character in the people in the state of Minnesota. There are fine athletes at this University of Minnesota, and I sincerely wish that I could have stayed there to a certain extent, but I could not possibly turn down the opportunity to come to Notre Dame. With that, that I come here, I'm not a miracle worker, I'm not a genius. I don't lay any belief in the fact that we are going to be successful because I'm here. The only chance we have is for the students and the athletes and the priests and the nuns and everybody that's followed Notre Dame to pull together and understand that there's great parity in college football today, and while we do have fine athletes here, other schools have fine athletes, and the margin between winning and losing is very small. I truly believe in the things that Notre Dame stands for, its values academically. I understand also there's some limitations here, but everything that Notre Dame stands for, we will support 100%. I hope that I can display the same type of character, integrity, and strong feelings that Jerry Faust has in the last five years. I don't ever say I think I can recall an individual that's handled himself better in all situations and in all environments or been a more positive influence on optimism to people that are down and depressed. I don't think we in this room or even Jerry himself realizes a number of lives that he's obviously touched in the last five years in a positive manner by the way he's handled adversity in a class manner. Let's take some questions from people on the phone. Nice to see you again, Rob. Have a... What are the mixed emotions you talk about from leaving Minnesota? The program on the upswing and yet you leave it behind. The question uh, here is to describe the mixed emotions that Coach Holtz has. Well, when I went to the University of Minnesota, I firmly believed in the bottom of my heart that would probably be the last coaching job I would ever have. However, the only stipulation we did put in was if Notre Dame ever did contact me, I would be, feel free to go. And they understood that from day one. I felt we were moving in the right direction. I liked living there. And it's just the fact that we enjoyed it and we were happy there. It was difficult to leave Minnesota, but I tell you what was more difficult, Rob, would have been to say no to Notre Dame. That I found to be impossible to do. Will you coach at the Independence Bowl in Shreveport? That will be up to the uh, jurisdiction of the administration at the University of Minnesota. I'll do whatever they ask me to do. I uh, will make that transition as easy and smoothly as I possibly can. Were there perhaps some promises that we're not following through with on the part of Minnesota? No, sir. Everybody's going to look for a reason why I left Minnesota, and they're going to look for a negative thing, and there isn't. The administration there at the university was beautiful. Uh, I enjoyed my stay there. My family was happy. It was just a case where I just felt this is a dream of a lifetime, and how many people at age 48 get a chance to still chase their dream? How many players expect they to follow you uh, here to Notre Dame? Absolutely not. We will not. Notre Dame has not in the past, except in rare occasion, and as I understand it, definitely will not ever accept any transfers here at Notre Dame. One final question. Have you recommended anybody to be your successor in Minnesota? I have uh, recommended some people off my staff. John Gutekunst, I think, would be an outstanding coach. 
but that is going to be a decision that they will have to make at the University of Minnesota. I'll do everything I possibly can to help them. I love that school. I love the people there. The question asked of me, I felt, would be the first one is, how do you feel leaving the athletes at Minnesota uh, after you recruited them? The things that we sold them on Minnesota was a great school academically. We would put together a good academic uh, operation. It would help them academically. We would build good facilities. We would fill up the stadium. We'd put a winning tradition in. It was a great area to live. It was a great chance for job opportunities. And those things are all still there. So I feel that the main reasons those athletes Chose University of Minnesota is still there. Lou Holtz is not the program. That program we tried to put on a firm foundation, and that thing will withstand the test of time. I think it's a wonderful opportunity for anybody who wishes to coach at the University of Minnesota. And Rob, well, I love that place dearly. I just could not possibly, despite the strong feelings I have, and they are sincere, say no to Notre Dame. Coach, can you please talk about that clause in your contract? Why was it put in there originally? Did you have that clause at Arkansas? On that clause in Coach Holtz's contract. And also, did you have any uh, premonition at that point in time when you had that clause that you would be coming to Notre Dame after two years? I had no idea I would ever come to Notre Dame. The job was never discussed with me by anybody. Uh, I had followed Notre Dame since 1946 when Johnny Lou Jack, as I recall, listening to the radio tackled Doc Blanchard in the open field to preserve a nothing-nothing tie. Uh, followed uh, Notre Dame. My grandfather followed Notre Dame. You grew up following Notre Dame. And uh, you go into coaching and you think, boy, that's a place I want to be. But, you know, when I went to Arkansas, I was, what, uh, I don't know, 40 or 41 or 39, somewhere in the vicinity. But when I went to the University of Minnesota, I really didn't have any intentions of going to Minnesota. We went up there in the windshield factor, 60 below. And for me to sit here and tell you, hey, that's a great place. I don't like cold weather. I feel like I came south. I got off the airplane. You, you don't have any snow here. Uh, but, but, you know, I went up there, and we sat down, and we prayed on it. My wife and my son and my daughter, we prayed on, uh, on the decision of Minnesota. My wife, uh, I hope she'll be here. My son's in the back of the room. I hope my wife will be here. She is to come. And, uh, you know, just a tremendous gal, and I love her dearly, and been a great influence on me, and we prayed on it. And after praying on it, just said, you know, put in there that I'll make it a lifetime contract, so to speak, except if the chance to go to Notre Dame ever came about, I would have the opportunity to talk to them. You talk about premonition, you talk about wishful dreams, except that's the one place that you think, well, would you go anywhere else? No, I like the Big Ten, I like the Midwest, one going well, but if they ever called, I'd like the right and the privilege to talk to them. It was strictly from that. <clears throat> yes, sir. You had, uh, just to go back a second to something you mentioned, you mentioned your defensive coordinator, John Gutekis. And is there anyone else on your staff you recommended? The question yeah. is, did Coach Holtz recommend any other coaches from his staff to Minnesota? I think we have several coaches going to be outstanding candidates. I think Larry Becky is going to be a great head football coach, and I think he's ready as well. John Gutekinds has been the assistant head football coach for us at the University of Minnesota and the defensive coordinator there and is a class individual, but so is Larry Beckish. Both of them are outstanding. There's some good young coaches that are going to be fine head coaching candidates like a guy like Pete Cordelli. Well, did you recommend it all three or just the two then? No, uh, I just said that I would wish that they would look very strongly at a member of our staff. Notre Dame's assistants do you plan to retain and how many do you plan to take, how many of Notre Dame's assistants plan, you plan to take here? with you from Minnesota? At the present time, I don't have any idea what we will do on, on staff. I'm sure the assistant coaches here at Notre Dame, they, uh, well, there you have Lou Holtz uh, saying that uh, he was glad to be the 25th uh, football coach at the University of Notre Dame. He said as tough as it was to make his decision to leave the University of Minnesota, he said there is just absolutely no way he could turn down Notre Dame because even as far back as grade school, there was always a desire 
to coach at Notre Dame, but he never thought it would become a reality. Well, it has become a reality today, and that, of course, uh, means major ramifications as far as the University of Minnesota football program is concerned. And with me now is senior linebacker Pete Najarian. And Pete, uh, this is nothing new to you. You are one of the individuals. You've seen the highs and the lows. You went through the 1-10 and 10 season, and, and you've gone through how many coaching changes just as far as defensive coordinators? Well, just as far as position coaches, I've probably had over 10 since I've been at the University of Minnesota, so I, I know what it's like to you know go through the transition of a coach. Tell me how the players, especially the young players, are going to react to Lou leaving, especially the players that he promised that he would be here. Yeah, well, I just hope they react positively. Uh, like Coach Holtz mentioned in, that, in the thing we just saw, that, uh, you know, when they came to Minnesota, they came for the academics, they came for the job opportunities when they finished, and uh, I just hope that they uh, realize all those things, and just because Coach Holtz is gone doesn't mean our football program is going to go down or anything else. I think we still have a chance to go up, and there's a lot of opportunities for more coaches to come in. You've spoken with some of your teammates today. How did they react to the announcement? Well, I think some of them were really surprised. I think a lot of people really thought the coach holds to be around for a while. But uh, there was quite a few, I think, mainly the seniors that realized that, uh, you know, if you're given the opportunity like a coaching job at Notre Dame, which Coach Holtz was given, uh, you got to take advantage of something like that. Do you feel there'll be any bitterness on the part of the young players who came in under Lou Holtz? Well, I'm sure some people will feel a little bit bitter. But I, I uh, myself and some of the other people will try to, you know, try to control that and still let them know that the opportunity was too great. and. Uh, yeah, you know, it's just one of those things that you really got to take advantage of when it comes along. I spoke to uh, Dr. Cecil Lloyd, Lloyd who is the uh, uh, the main man of the Independence Bowl. Uh, he mentioned to me that as far as the Independence Bowl is concerned, that they invited the Minnesota Gophers and Lou Holtz, but most importantly, the team, that it's a reward for the team members. Uh, how do the players feel about the Independence Bowl now and their chances uh, when we may find out in a moment when we go to the University of Minnesota news conference who's going to coach that team? Who do you think will coach the team? I really don't know. I, uh, it's really tough to say. It could be Coach Holtz. It could be uh, Coach Gutekunst. Uh, you know, it might even be Coach Gutekunst after we're listening to what Coach Holtz had to say. We'll just have to see. But uh, I'll tell you, we're going to go down there really excited. None of us have ever been to a bowl game before. I'm really looking forward to going down there. It should be fun. You mentioned uh, John Gutekunst. Uh, Tell us the type of man that he is, because uh, my reading of what Lou Holtz said is that he probably has recommended him very strongly to the University of Minnesota. What kind of individual is he? What's his personality like? And, you know, what kind of a coach do you think he would be? I think he'd be a great coach. Coach Kugins is really uh, kind of a mild-mannered man who is really intelligent and knows football really well. And he's built our defense from uh, the worst defense in the entire country to the third best defense in the Big Ten, so that kind of speaks for itself. How do you think uh, your father, of course, uh, is, a, is a, a very famous a man over at the University yeah. of Minnesota, the University of Minnesota Hospital, a big booster of the University of Minnesota football team, and he, of course, knows many other very big boosters, yeah. especially in a financial way. Uh, I don't know if you can respond to this, but how do you think uh, people who were approached uh, recently in the past two years to, to get behind the University of Minnesota football program because of Lou Holtz, and now Lou Holtz dumps out before he achieved the Rose Bowl. How do you think they're going to respond to this? Well, I, I, I sure don't think they'll respond poorly. I think uh, you just got to understand the when you're given an opportunity like that, you got to take advantage of it. And I think uh, they, more than anybody, would understand that when you're in the business world and you're given uh, the opportunity to keep rising and go to the top, that they got to take advantage of it. Your personal feeling as far as Lou uh, in your two years playing for him? Well, I really have been privileged to play for Coach Holtz, and uh, I just think it's great, and I'm glad that he got the opportunity to coach where he's always wanted to be. Okay, well, thank you. That's Peter Najarian, senior linebacker, one of the members of the team who uh, at this moment uh, is not sure of who will be coaching him in the Independence Bowl that the Gophers will be playing in December 21st down in Shreveport, Louisiana. Now, so far today, officials at the University of Minnesota have not commented on the coaching situation. Uh, they, they were waiting, of course, until that official announcement that we saw just a moment ago live from South Bend. Now that that has been taken care of, Men's Athletic Director Paul Gill is momentarily going to hold a news conference over at the University of Minnesota. Uh, Channel 5's Joe Schmidt is there live now, and, and Joe, there we have you. Uh, what is the feeling there, especially uh, ha was there reaction in the room to Lou Holtz uh, recommending, it sounds like to me very strongly, John Gutenkunst as uh, the next head football coach at the university. That's right, Bob, and I talked with John just about two hours ago, and he told me he was taking his family to the Science Museum in St. Paul. He told me he is, one, very interested in uh, taking over for Lou Holtz as the head coach of Minnesota. He also told me that he thought the job was started. He felt it would be important to keep the coaching staff together, even without Lou Holtz, keep that staff together. And he thought the job uh, would be an easier one to finish off. Now, uh, the, the thing that's interesting about John is that, of course, he is a defensive coach. Larry Beckish 
who has also been mentioned uh, as a possible coach. Uh, coach Holtz mentioned him in the press conference. Larry did not want to comment at all. I talked with him earlier today, too. He, of course, the offensive coordinator. What we're expected to hear here in just a couple of minutes is the reaction from University of Minnesota officials. Paul Gill, the athletic director, will be here along with Dr. Frank Wilderson, the vice president of student affairs, and Dr. Kenneth Keller, the president of the University of Minnesota. It looks like we are all getting set up here, so we should be ready momentarily, Bob, to uh, come back to this press conference and hear what the official word is from university officials. Uh, Joe, uh, one question uh, concerning the selection process. Uh, you were talking to the uh, president's office earlier today. I believe it is a state law that they must set up a search committee. And if indeed that is the fact, then the university will probably lose extremely precious time as far as recruiting is concerned, which begins next Monday. That is probably why the University of Notre Dame, in fact, I know that's why they move so quickly. Is there any feeling there that maybe this process is going to be, uh, you know, accelerated quite considerably? Well, one feeling is that the last time the head coaching job opened up here at Minnesota, they dragged their feet uh, too long selecting a selection committee. So I think one reason that we're going to have the press conference here today is to alert the people that the selection committee will be going in a hurry and they won't waste any time because the recruiting season does start on Monday and you just don't have any time to waste to uh, get those good athletes here at the University of Minnesota. Uh, as we said, we're still waiting for uh, Paul Giel and uh, Dr. Ken, uh, Ken Keller and Dr. Wilderson to come to uh, the press conference here, and we expect them here momentarily. Joe, you mentioned that uh, the, the process this time would be a little different than the last time around because, in fact, uh, Lou Holtz, uh, if he did something for the university, it was, in fact, build a multi-million dollar football facility, uh, for the, probably the finest in the country, recruit some very talented athletes, so it would appear to me that the caliber of coaching candidates, uh, you know, beyond the current staff, uh, will be quite a cut above what they had the last time around. And in fact, at one point, the search committee uh, had a list of names and they all turned them down. So I don't think that will be the case this time around. Well, that's time. I guess five coaches turned down this job before Lou Holtz took the job. Two years later, of course, the program is back on uh, solid turf. The facility is there, uh, the athletes are here, and now they just need a coach and a coaching staff to put it together and uh, continue the winning program here at Minnesota. Just to update uh, those of you who may have just joined us uh, just moments ago, we carried uh, the announcement that uh, Lou Holtz, the former head coach of the University of Minnesota, is now the head coach at Notre Dame. Uh, Lou said that uh, when he came to Minnesota that he thought it would be his last job, but that was only if Notre Dame never called him, and Notre Dame did indeed call him today, and he became the new head uh, football coach at the University of Notre Dame. One big question that's hanging over all of this right now is not only who will be the next head football coach at the University of Minnesota, but more importantly, uh, recruiting aspects, how quickly will they name that football coach, because it is crucial to the program. If they go two or three weeks, uh, they will lose probably most every good athlete that they have recruited. Uh, also, uh, hanging over the head of uh, Athletic Director Paul Gill, who we are now waiting to hold uh, his live news conference over at the University campus, is who will indeed coach the Gophers uh, in the Independence Bowl. Let's go back now uh, to Joe Schmidt. And Joe, was there much talk uh, at the football, uh, where you're at now, I, I believe is the administration building. Much talk about the Independence Bowl at all and, and who might possibly uh, coach that situation. I know Lou has mentioned that he would be available to coach the team, but uh, my feelings are that I, I doubt seriously that the university would want that. Well, as of right now, we don't have any information on whether Lou would be coaching the team at the Independence Bowl or not. There's a lot of speculation. We've got a room here just jam-packed full of media members from Minnesota, and I'm sure that'll be one of the first questions that uh, will be asked upon uh, the officials here as soon as uh, we come down. We do understand that uh, Lou Holtz would be willing to coach the team if he is asked to coach the team. So I think that decision just has to be made by the university officials here, whether or not Lou will coach the team in the Independence Bowl. You know, I talked to some of the players over the dormitory today, and they were a little concerned. They were hoping that coach would come and uh, coach the team at the Independence Bowl. A couple of the freshmen and sophomores, they were worried that they'd take the bowl trip away from them because Lou Holtz was no longer part of the team. But Bob, you talked with uh, officials down at the Independence Bowl, and uh, they still want the Gophers, don't they? Okay, uh, let's, let's go back to South Bend, Indiana now. Lou Holtz is talking about uh, some of the television crews uh, that were trying to uh, break the story last night. Let's pick that conference up again live as we wait for Paul Gill to begin at the university campus. Let's go to South Bend. We're unarmed. Uh, <laughs> I, I, I don't know. I'm just going to be myself. Well, we wanted to go to South Bend. As you can see, we've got some technical problems. Uh, uh, we should mention again that Lou did recommend uh, two of his assistants, John Kudenkunz, uh, 
uh, was uh, uh, the main man that he recommended. Now, now I hear that we do have the signal back in South Bend, so let's rejoin Lou as he addresses uh, press from all over the country. Well, uh, they just dumped out of that for us, so now we will wait now for the University of Minnesota to uh, uh, begin their news conference. As far as Lou Holtz, uh, once again, he said it was the happiest day in his life. Uh, we reported early this morning, in fact, the first confirmation that he did indeed accept the job came at around 11 o'clock this morning. Channel 5 sports reporter Greg Warmuth spoke to Lou in his home. Uh, he was invited in. Uh, Lou smiled at him, and Greg said, uh, you know why I'm here? And he said, yes. And Greg asked him, uh, did you accept the job? And he said, yes. And then uh, shortly after that, uh, Lou boarded a plane for South Bend, Indiana, and there this afternoon you saw a moment ago that he was named the head coach of the University of Notre Dame. Let's go back over to the university campus and check in with Joe Schmidt and what's happening there as far as uh, is Paul Gill ready yet? Well, the university officials are now walking down the hallway. Bob, we were talking just a minute ago about potential candidates, and uh, I called a couple of them this afternoon. Tony Dungy, the Pittsburgh Steelers defensive coordinator, says he is not interested in the job. Uh, and Tom Moore, the offensive coordinator, says he is. And now we have uh, the university officials, as you can see, uh, Dr. Kenneth Keller in the middle, Paul Giel, and Dr. Frank Wilderson. And we'll now go to the press conference live. Good afternoon, and uh, welcome all of you uh, here. Uh, I think I don't have any news to share with you. I think all of you are aware by this time that uh, Lou Holtz has informed us and has made a public announcement that he is accepting the position of head coach at uh, Notre Dame University. Uh, uh, Lou and uh, Paul Giel on my right and Frank Wilderson on my left and I have had discussions in the last two days, uh, talked about uh, our desire to have him stay at the University of Minnesota, have talked about uh, what the university has meant to him, and I think I can fairly summarize what he said is, uh, that logic would dictate uh, that he should stay at the University of Minnesota, but his heart tells him uh, that he has long had the desire to be at Notre Dame and that that has overwhelmed what we would have hoped his decision would be. We are very disappointed uh, that Lou is leaving. At the same time, uh, we feel that the progress that uh, the university has made in its football program and its athletic program uh, with Lou Holtz uh, is permanent progress, is progress on which we can build, and we wish uh, Lou the, the best of luck. Uh, we thank him for his contributions to the university, and we immediately look to the future and look to a continuation of the building of the football program at the University of Minnesota. To that end, we are immediately starting on uh, a search uh, for a replacement for Lou Holtz, to whom we can offer uh, superb facilities, excellent young men who have been recruited to our football program, uh, the support of a community that is interested in the Gophers and that is excited about it, uh, and therefore I think we can offer to someone uh, a bright future. Uh, I have established a search committee uh, comprising Vice President Wilderson and Dean Stein and uh, Paul Giel uh, to look for a new coach. We are at this time making a public announcement of the existence of the position uh, that we will keep the application process open for one week uh, that we intend to move as quickly and aggressively as possible with a very streamlined search committee uh, to find someone who will uh, continue the values which i think lou holtz uh, brought to us uh, concern for the academic quality of the program, concern for the integrity of the program, uh, concern for the spirit of the program, so that we are uh, <clears throat> looking to the future uh, and uh, are very hopeful about it. Dr. Uh, Keller. Yes, sir. Uh, what about the Independence Bowl? Will Lou Holtz coach the Independence Bowl? Have you made a decision? Yes, he will coach the Independence Bowl. Did you ante the kitty at all to try to get Lou Holtz to stay? Was money at all... Lou told us that we had offered him everything that any coach could possibly want and that if it were simply a question of logic, there is nothing more he could ask us for nor anything more that he could expect from us and that uh, he was nothing but complimentary in private and I think he has said that in public. We, in the last several weeks uh, prior to this, have been talking with him about expanded responsibilities and uh, 
uh, taking advantage of his talents even more than we had been. And I would have to say that uh, I have no reason to think that we left any stone unturned in terms of what it would take to keep a coach or to make him happy, and that that was not the basis of his decision. Is it your hope to have a new coach name within the week's time, or by a week? Well, I don't think we can do it in a week. Uh, we are going to leave applications open for a week to ensure that uh, anyone interested uh, in the job has a chance to make it known to us. But I certainly hope that this will be decided uh, before the Christmas holidays. Do you have a list of candidates at this time? Lou Holtz said that he did recommend Mr. Gutekunst. Well, the three people on our search committee have been working since late last night already generating a list, and we are already getting recommendations. Well, Dr. Gill, uh, what are you looking for in a new head coach? Are you looking for another salesman uh, such as Lou Holtz, a, a guy who came in and sold a lot of tickets and uh, also turned the program around? What's the main <laughs> characteristic that your search group will be looking for in a new head coach? What we're looking for, as the uh, criteria will uh, indicate, uh, Division I experience for at least five years, an NCAA competition, uh, and uh, or professional experience, whether they be a head coach or an assistant coach. Uh, right now, it's, it's wide open. As the expression goes, there's different strokes for different folks. Uh, lots of successful coaches get it done and get the job done uh, with various... Uh, personalities. Lou Holtz uh, is a tremendous motivator and uh, a very inspirational speaker, as well as being a darn fine coach, uh, but there are others out there with different personalities, so um, my mind is wide open on that. I don't want to get stereotyped. Well, why wasn't uh, the stipulation in Lou Holtz's contract with the public possibility of just having the door open to go to Notre Dame? I think I'll let uh, Dr. Wilderson answer that because okay. it's something we were discussing. <laughs> Uh, I should make something very clear. There is no stipulation in uh, Lou Holtz's contract about Notre Dame. Uh, what we made it clear to the coach is that uh, if after he has been here for several years, two or what, and a, um, an offer came along that he thought he wanted to go to look at, we would hope by that time that our program would be in such fine shape that we would be able to convince him that he should stay here and see that work of his uh, to fruition. And so we made sure that he knew that he would be free without any animosity on the part of the university uh, if an offer came along. There's nothing in any contract of any of our coaches that stipulates the name of, a, of an institution. So it wasn't just Notre Dame. It had it been USC or... Exactly, same, exactly. Same Very much so. I think that the, the key is that we want a coach to be here because his heart is here. If his heart isn't here anymore, uh, then it doesn't help to keep him here by some contractual arrangement. We're out looking for someone whose heart will be in Minnesota. In that light, in that light what was the decision-making process behind having Holtz coach uh, the Independence Bowl? I think that the key is that, that, that that's the culmination of a season, uh, that it's a season in which uh, Coach Holtz has given a lot to the university and he's worked with our players, uh, and that both of them uh, deserve this good finish to a season. We don't leave under bad circumstances. We're, we've come to a point where uh, we're proud of what... Okay, back live in the Channel 5 uh, newsroom. Uh, that is uh, University of Minnesota President Kenneth Keller uh, announcing that uh, search committee has been set up by the university uh, very quickly, much more quickly uh, than the last time they were looking for a coach. Dr. Frank Wilderson, along with Dean Stein and Paul Gill, are on that search committee, along with the president, of course. Uh, they have uh, publicly announced the job. They will uh, leave applications open for a week, and they hope to have a decision before Christmas, before Christmas, and they will need to have a decision probably before that if they're going to have a chance at recruiting some athletes. Uh, also coming out today was that the option in Lujo contract was not just to Notre Dame, but in fact was to any university in the country that he wanted to go to. So uh, Lou Holtz has now officially been installed as the head coach of the University of Notre Dame. Uh, now the next step is who will be the next coach at the University of Minnesota. Well, now we're going to join In Progress America and a reminder to you good company viewers, uh, we will of course have good company at 4 p.m. and later on the 5, 6, and 10 o'clock edition of Eyewitness News, uh, live reports from South Bend and much more on the situation at the University of Minnesota football program. This is Bob Bruce reporting. Save some money, save some time, save a nickel, save a dime, lower prices every time, go see Cal. <laughs> oh.
Oh, boy. Well, right now, I want you to meet the granddaddy of them all, Mr. Cal Worthington. Cal, yeah, it's great having you here. Thank you. You know, your dog spot commercials are known all over America. Now, how did you come up with that? Well, it's kind of a, kind of an accident.